Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Resume Writing for Career Changers with career coach and UCLA alumna, Kimberly Cook. My name is Joseph Blancas and I serve as an assistant director for alumni career engagement at UCLA Alumni Affairs. In today's program, you will learn the true purpose of a resume, how the hiring process works and strategies for creating a compelling resume. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank our Alumni Associ Association sustaining donors it's with your help that we're able to strengthen the Bruin community with career programs like this. For some general webinar housekeeping, we'll have time at the end of our program for a Q&A with our speaker. So please use the Q&A function below to submit your questions, as well as um, we will be sending out a recording of the event at a later date once the recording is made available. Now to start our program, I'm excited to introduce Kimberly Cook. Kimberly is a former UCLA health administrator and hiring manager. She uses over a decade of healthcare experience and insider knowledge to the advantage of her clients. While her background is in the healthcare industry, she is passionate about seeing aspiring care professionals and more experienced careers thrive in any industry and achieve professional success. Clients across the United States trust her knowledge and expertise to give them the ultimate competitive advantage and accelerate their careers. I'll turn it over to Kimberly now to start our program. Thank you, Joseph. Of course, Kimberly. All right. Let's make sure I get this on here. All righty, here we go. So I'm happy to be here with everyone today um, and share some resume strategies to effectively change careers. So as Joseph mentioned, um, in my company, Blue Pen Resumes, we work specifically with healthcare professionals. And I've spent my entire career in healthcare, and I get to leverage those skills to really help job seekers across the world at this point clarify their professional goals, put their best foot forward, and accelerate their healthcare careers. But if you're not in healthcare, don't worry, you're still in the right place, um, as the insights and strategies I'll share will be applicable across industries. So this workshop is really designed for you to participate. So there will be poll questions throughout um, so I can learn more about you and tailor the presentation as much as possible as we move through the information. Also, I encourage you to grab a copy of your resume and have it handy so you can take notes um, and refer to it in real time um, as the information I share today um, will really be applicable and you can put it in place. And at the end, I will have a special gift for those of you who are considering pivoting to the healthcare industry. All righty, so this is something fun I like to start off with. I know that UCLA um, has a global alumni network, so it's really fun to know where you're joining us from. Um, and you can see the information to participate is at the top of the screen. I hope you can see it. Joseph, are you able to see it? No, it's not showing up for us. Oh. Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure why that is. So well, technical difficulties, we just have to keep moving forward. So I'm joining from Texas and all the memes that you're seeing out there as far as how hot it is in Texas is true. <laughs> it's really hot out here. All righty. So I would, would have liked to know what kind of career change you're considering, but we can't pull up the poll today. So we're going to keep moving forward. So let's start with what exactly is a career change. So a career change usually constitutes of a significant shift where you change the type of work that you do altogether and often involves switching industries. For example, going from teaching to nursing or retail to higher education. Those are major shifts. Um, and understandably, it may be intimidating to embark on a change in a direction, but armed with a well-informed strategy for how to leverage your existing skills and experience, you can write a compelling resume that will open doors for your next move. So here's what we'll cover today. One, the purpose of a resume. Two, the hiring process. And three, resume writing strategies. I know you may just wanna jump straight into the resume writing tips, but I would really be doing you a disservice if I didn't give you, if I gave you tips, without context. 
So my goal here today is to really help you um, think from the perspective of the hiring manager so you can write an, a resume that's effective for a career change. Again, a question I would have liked to know the answer to, but I'll just go straight into it. So the resume is often misunderstood as a document to present your entire work history. While you will need to present your work and educational history, what's most important is relevant information. Let's think about it for a second. This one document determines whether or not you will be invited for an interview. So listing everything that you've ever done in your career, especially when considering a change, really runs the risk of confusing the hiring manager. If you include information that's not relevant to the new role, it will ultimately hurt your chances of getting selected for an interview for that target role. So starting today, I want you to stop thinking of your resume just as a record of your work history. But instead, think of your resume as a marketing document with the sole purpose of selling you in a way that demonstrates that you are the solution to the employer's need as conveyed by the job posting. So after all, the purpose of marketing is really to get people interest in, interested. Often it's about a product or a service. And if it's good marketing, the company effectively positions themselves as the solution to their target audience's need. So go with me for a minute. We're gonna build on this. So here are some recognizable brands that you will know right off the bat the problem that they will solve for you. For example, Snickers will appease your hunger, or so they say, but that's not the point. <laughs> Notice they don't go into great detail in their customer-facing marketing, at least, about what the Snicker bar contains. Why? Because it's irrelevant for what they want you to do at the moment, which is buy a Snicker bar when you feel hungry. And for those of us who remember when Amazon only sold books and their positioning statement was instant access to over 1.1 million books. So the problem that Amazon used to solve for its target audience was convenient access to lots of books. So these are just a few examples, albeit simplistic, but I'm sure you get the picture. And keep in mind, brands spend millions of dollars to position themselves so that when consumers think about a particular problem they may have, they come to mind instinctively. Why? Because that leads to brand recognition and brand recognition leads to sales and increased profitability of the business. And similarly, in the case of your resume, which as now you know is a marketing tool, needs to pique the interest of recruiters and hiring managers to land interviews. And so I have a saying that your resume introduces you to hiring managers and recruiters and speaks on your behalf. Ensure your first impression is compelling. You really only get one chance to make a first impression and demonstrate that you're the solution to the employer's need. And that is the true purpose of your resume. So screenshot this if you need to, but just keep this statement or definition in mind because we'll revisit it as I move through the presentation and we talk about specific resume writing strategies when changing careers. Another question, but we'll move right into it. So the hiring process. So now as it relates to changing careers, it may seem like a daunting task because how exactly are you to position yourself for a new career as the solution to the employer's need, when likely you may not have any of the specific experience that that job description details. But here's the good news. There is a way. And having a well-informed strategy um, and understanding the hiring process really is the next fundamental piece that needs to be defined before we jump into the specific strategies. So I'm a visual learner and some of you may be as well. So I like to explain things, um, explain the hiring process rather in a funnel that gets smaller and smaller as you move through. So starting from the top, you attach your resume to an online application with many candidates. Then your resume is filtered through the applicant tracking system or ATS for short, 
then once your resume reaches the hiring manager's desk, it has to be compelling enough to land interviews, to land the interview rather, then once you're in front of the hiring manager, you must convince them that you are the one they should hire. Now, that last rung in the funnel is beyond the scope of this workshop, but it's important to just keep this visual in mind so you understand the heavy lifting that your marketing document, aka your resume, has to do to land the interview. While you may already be familiar um, with the hiring process, I want to share some more insights that you may not be privy to. So one, hiring managers want you to be the candidate they select. Yes, you. When a hiring manager begins to receive applications for a position, they're eager and ready to find a good fit for their open role. Because the longer the position stays open, either they have to do more work um, or there's more strain on their team as their team has to take on additional responsibilities until the role is filled. So yes, the hiring manager is ready for the search to be over and rooting for you to be the one. Which brings me to my next point. Hiring managers select candidates that are the solutions to their needs. I think you knew this one was coming. Hiring managers want someone who will seamlessly integrate into their department. Someone who will understand the fundamentals of doing this specific job. And in some cases, they may want someone who they don't have to train, depending on how long the role has been open or how critical the role is to daily operating functions. I know this is often something that job seekers don't want to hear, but it's important to keep this in mind as you embark on your search. Hiring managers also do not read resumes. I know this may come as a shock, but between managing a team, running a department or an organization, time is really um, limited. So your resume will be skimmed, think seconds, not minutes. And lastly, um, I snagged this one from a um, LinkedIn recruiter because he just put it so well. Hiring managers do not reject candidates. They reject the information presented to them. Because the bottom line is, while you may be amazing, it's not if your resume is not communicating your value in a compelling way, unfortunately, it will be weeded out. Okay, so now let's jump into the specific strategies that you can apply right now to your resume so that you can position yourself as the solution to the employer's need, pique the hiring manager's interest, and be a competitive applicant as a career changer. First and foremost, you want to eliminate jargon from your old industry. So any acronyms and terminology that are specific to your old industry is likely a foreign language in your target industry. So the old industry jargon should either be explained, if applicable, or removed altogether. Unless, of course, it's terminology specific to a job function. For example, IT or HR terminology is generally the same across industries. But you definitely want to avoid alienating the hiring manager and making your resume stand out for all of the wrong reasons. Remember, the hiring manager is skimming your resume. They're busy. They're looking for, certain, for a certain kind of candidate and, accept and expect to see certain keywords and in industry jargon, terminology, and acronyms, acronyms, but those are specific to their industry. So give them what they want. Help them help you. For example, if you're going from healthcare to another field, you may want to spell out EHR as electronic health record or describe it as a digital database of patient information that's shared across networks. And so a pro tip would be to incorporate some of the new industry terminology used in the job description in your resume. This can be done through a careful review of the job description, looking up any terms that you're unfamiliar with, and seeing how your past experience aligns and choosing the keywords that you incorporate strategically. Next, it's important to reframe your skills, experience, and achievements in the context of the new industry or world or role. In other words, 
show how your skills, experience, and achievements are applicable or transferable to the new position or industry. Some examples could be communication skills, management skills, uh, or experience producing cost savings, revenue growth, improving processes, all of which can be leveraged and are valuable in a variety of settings and roles and are not just specific to one industry. Using this strategy really helps the hiring manager quickly see how you would add value in the new position or industry. And I would recommend incorporating this strategy in the career summary portion of your resume, which usually comes first after your name and contact information. This allows you to immediately capture the attention of the hiring manager and guide their thought process, as opposed to leaving it open for interpretation for them to move through your resume and sift through all of your experience and try to pull out qualifications that would be applicable in their setting. Utilizing this strategy, um, again, also demonstrates your understanding of the industry that you desire to switch to and shows thoughtfulness and intentionality and that you're not just sending out resumes aimlessly and just hoping that something would stick somewhere, but that you took the time to tailor your experience to really demonstrate that your unique skill set is the solution to their need. And so here's a pro tip. Um, for example, let's see, use the phrase ability to, to indicate your potential when you're lacking a key qualification. I had a client once who was pivoting to healthcare, um, specifically HR, but she didn't have experience in a key component of the new role. She was a smart girl. Um, she was completing her master's in human resources management. So in order to address that qualif qualification in particular, I added the following sentence to her professional summary. Up-to-date HR management experience with ability to research and analyze healthcare organizational data and processes to identify trends, root causes, and identify solutions consistent with business objectives. This way, we were able to directly address the required qualifications for her um, for the position that she was targeting and position her as a competitive applicant, even though she didn't have the specific experience. Next, it's important to showcase impact over responsibilities. So think about this. What effect have you had in your previous roles, whether on your team, department, or the business in general? This can be a very powerful strategy if executed right, um, it's very common to list your responsibilities and just leave it at that, um, but it doesn't really give the hiring manager any indicator of the full scope of your world. However, impact statements carry more weight, and they can also speak to your ability to take ownership in your role, as you don't just show up to do the minimum required to collect a paycheck, but that you have an engaged, that you will be an engaged member of the team and add value and that investing in you um, would be an excellent return on investment. So how exactly do you do this? First off, the opposite of an impact statement in resume writing would be a responsibility statement, often listed as a bullet um, or bullets after you list the name of the company, the title of the position, and often reads like responsible for fill in the blank X, Y, Z. And if we're honest, it's usually copied and pasted from your job description or the target job description. So please don't do that. Let's use um, this example of training to demonstrate the differences between responsibilities and impact. So here's a responsibility statement. Responsible for customer service training. You could say that but this doesn't really say much about the scope of your role and the impact that you've had at your organization. Try saying something like this instead. Trained 100 front office staff members on importance of patient experience using student communication framework, which increased patient satisfaction by 15% in one month. See the difference? You've now painted a much clearer picture of what you actually did, your impact, 
as opposed to just listing responsible for, which when you think about it, isn't actually saying much. This was just a responsibility, but were you successful in executing this aspect of your role? However, impact statements will answer all of those questions in the employer's mind. Also, the impact that you've had um, doesn't have to be anything award-winning um, for you to apply this strategy. Let's say you also lead training, but it was more routine and didn't necessarily impact key performance indicators. You can still utilize this strategy um, to highlight the scope and effect. You can quantify the number of people in attendance, personal characteristics and how you deliver the training, as well as the number of people who completed the post-training evaluation, for example. So here's how that could look. Deliver engaging, monthly customer service training to groups of 50 associates with 100% training survey completion rate. So if you think in terms of how many, how much, how long, you'll be able to create your own impact statements that would demonstrate the scope of your responsibilities and ultimately help the organization imagine how you could help them achieve their business objectives as well. And so building more on this point, here's another pro tip. So keep in mind, one second. So companies invest in people with a track record of success. So here you see that I mentioned keep a brag sheet to log the impact of your work. So it's really best to keep this, keep track of this either in a Word document or um, a notebook. So you can remember to showcase them on your resume. This sheet really comes in handy for performance appraisals and um, interviews as well. And even top executives um, do this to, to keep track of their performance as it's often tied to additional compensation. All righty. And lastly, this is another powerful strategy, um, providing context for each position listed on your resume especially doing a career change. This is your opportunity to really educate the hiring manager. Since you're coming from an industry different, a different industry um, and possibly profession, you wanna make it easy for them to see how your experience falls in line with what they're looking for. And it's as simple as including a brief description of the companies that you've worked for, um, as well as the roles held in a way that highlights that aspects of those companies um, their reason for being and how that aligns with the new company. Remember, context is key. And similarly, when describing past roles, make sure to showcase the transferable aspects. So here's an example of how this can be done on your resume. This is an excerpt from a resume that I wrote for a client. As you can see, I've included a brief blurb about the organization and a high level overview of the responsibilities of the role to give the hiring manager some context. And another pro tip, um, it's important again to omit irrelevant details from, past, from your past work history. As I mentioned at the beginning, the purpose of your resume is to sell you and to demonstrate that you are the solution to the employer's need. So your resume is a marketing document. So only include enough information to convince the hiring manager that you are the person they've been looking for. So irrelevant details only run the risk of confusing the hiring manager and that's not what you want. Alrighty, so to recap, when writing your resume for a career change, you wanna eliminate jargon from your old industry you want to showcase your impact over responsibilities. You want to reframe your skills, experience, and achievements in the context of the new role or industry. And lastly, you want to provide context for each position listed on your resume. All right. So this would have been our last slide, but with technical difficulties, um, I can't really get to know what you guys will need to do to improve your current resume, but these are things for you to think about if you need to go back through as you're looking at your resume and eliminate jargon or showcase more impact or reframe your existing experience into the new context. So that brings us to the end of the workshop. Um, thank you for joining me today. Um, despite the technical difficulties, 
Um, I hope that the strategies presented um, will really help you develop an effective resume for career change. If you would like to connect with me, um, you can find me on LinkedIn or Instagram. Um, and for those healthcare professionals, as promised, or those of you who want to break into the healthcare industry, um, as a part of the UCLA Alumni Network, um, you can receive 10% off healthcare resume services online at bluepenresumes.com. All right, so I can check to see if we have any questions now. So first question says, hi, thank you for doing this presentation. I'm an RN and an MP with over 15 years in the nursing and medical field. I'm now looking for 100% remote work as a utilization reviewer, case manager, documentation specialist, anything that can be done remotely. If I don't have specific experience in these fields, but I know it would be great in any position given my vast knowledge of nursing and medical fields. How can I make myself attractive for these areas? Thank you again. Okay, so you wanna to move to remote with your um, RN and MP skills. Really, again, so this is gonna really focus on, again, highlighting all of the skills that are transferable to the role. Now, even though the role is remote, they're likely gonna need you to utilize all of the clinical skills that you've gained over the years. So we're gonna put that front and center, again, to position you as being the solution and whatever other tech software, for example, that you have used in the past, will highlight that as well to show that you can um, let's say lead teams or do whatever you need to do in a remote manner, um, whether that's through experience with Microsoft Teams um, or Zoom, for example, or giving virtual presentations, we would weave that in there to position you as an attractive candidate. Okay, next question. So one question mentioned, since you're switching careers, we may not, we may be in need of training and how can we still be attractive to a hiring manager and not seem um, a burden given this fact again. So this is where you put in all of the experience or the transferable experience and skills that you have to position yourself as someone who, let's say you were able to learn something quickly. That's where a cover letter may come into play. Um, you're a fast learner um, and you're, um, let's see, in need of training, you can still be attractive, demonstrate all of the skills that you have right now that's going to position you to that hiring manager to be attractive. Um, and if it's training that you know that you need, um, again, in the cover letter, you can communicate that you have a desire to learn more and you've been doing things on your own um, so that you would be effective in that role. Someone mentioned that they've applied to a public university, they've added the keywords, relevant experience, um, and they're still yet to um, receive a callback. I think the question moved. But there are many reasons why you may not receive a callback. It could be that the position was posted and then internally there were changes, um, so it's been placed on hold, or the position could have been posted um, as a formality, it's just something candidates don't wanna hear as well. An internal candidate has already been selected. So there are many reasons why. Um, it really just depends on the organization. But if you don't have impact or achievements when you're in an industry that are just tasks, there's always a way to quantify your um, impact on your resume. So that's a skill where a resume writer can come in and really look at what you've done um, and help you showcase those. Another question similar to that when showcasing your impact over responsibilities, what if you don't have the statistics regarding your impact, for example, a percentage? Again, if you go back and you think about how many, how much, um, even personality traits, as I shared in one of those examples, that's a way to demonstrate impact as well. Is the rule still keep it to one page? No, the rule is incorporate relevant information. If that relevant information spills over to two years, it's fine. Sometimes with um, more seasoned executives, it may go over to three pages. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure you include um, relevant information and nothing that will detract from your candidacy. Someone is um, asking about, they've been in academia and they only have a CV. 
what's suggested to have for the most effective resume format. Again, that is going to depend on the role that you're seeking. You're switching from academia to industry um, is going to be cut. Your CV will be cut down significantly. And again, the goal is to only include relevant information um, based on what the job description is asking for. So it's going to change based on what the specific job targets. I can't really tell you in detail. Another one should the resume be limited to one page? No. I'm looking to break into sales within the healthcare industry. Is this something that you also cover? Yes. More questions about the length of the resume. Again, just include relevant information. How do I deal with my best job being 20 years ago? Should I do a functional resume? I've had success with them before. Yes, again, it's going to depend on the new role that you're targeting. If the experience that you had 20 years ago is most applicable, we'll reference it. We may not list all of the jobs you've ever had on your resume again, because that would be too lengthy. Um, we want to make sure it's skimmable as well. But we will pull out the attributes and the skills that you gain from those experiences and make sure that they're front and center within the first third um, of the first page of your resume. If I'm leaving a company that had legal or government investigative issues, how would you handle disclosing them in your resume or ignore until the interview? I wouldn't disclose that on the resume and that's something that can be shared um, in person during an interview, for example. The format and style of your resume really depends on the industry that you're going into. Um, if it's more of a creative field or tech, for example, um, the use of color is often okay. Um, healthcare is a little bit more conservative, so I don't use color in resumes, but again, it depends on your target industry. Someone mentioned that they would like to start with a general resume to use for um, networking guidance as I find the next world I'm looking for. I think that's fine, <clears throat> excuse me, in a networking scenario, but when it's time to apply, even if someone passes along your resume, you still have to have the information that's relevant to the position that you're looking for and not only just general skills or experience. If you're really able to tailor your resume to the specific role, it will have a better effect, more compelling effect for sure, and really help that employer see that, okay, yes, this person can do this job um, and not have to really sift through all of your experience to pull out the attributes that they may need. Okay, some of these questions are for interviews. Okay, um, there's another question with, that asks, do you have any suggestions on, let's say a job description that asks for five plus years of experience, but you only have three years, but can perform all the tasks. How do you convey this to the recruiting team? When looking at a job description, it's important to look at what's required and what's preferred. If the five years of experience is what's required, um, there may not be a way to get around that unless there's a statement that says they're willing to consider the equal mix of experience um, and education. So you can get around it there, but if it's in the preferred category, by all means still apply to that job. <clears throat> What are the key sections a resume should include? Um, for sure, work experience, education, if you have any, software, if it's applicable, um, volunteer experience, community involvement, again, if it's relevant to the role that you're applying for. For someone sifting out of the nursing field after a limited number of years, do you remove those nurse specific jobs or keep them since they're typically relevant for non-healthcare positions. Again, it depends on the role. If some of the skills that you gain in nursing applies, you would keep them and make those relevant connections. If it's completely different, then you could consider for sure taking that out because it would be irrelevant. Some clients like to include photos on their resume, but I don't um, recommend it, especially because each person can have a different bias and you don't want to um, have those biases come up once they're reviewing their, your resume. Currently, um, we're onboarding more team members. Someone asked about blue pen resumes. 
um, to the company, but right now you would work directly with me for probably the next week or two, then it would be someone else, depending on availability. Tips for tailoring your resume to each company um, and job, really researching the company, researching the position, uh, reading the, the job description in detail and make sure you have an understanding and pulling out the categories that they're looking for in terms of experience um, and skills. And then now looking at your resume and seeing what information should I keep that speaks directly to what was presented in the job description. So this question asks about relevant experience, similar to the one before, 15 years old, you've had many types of roles, um, as well as gaps and recent experience is irrelevant. Um, Again, it's really going to depend on the role. I would have to see it to really guide you and say, okay, yes, we should include it, um, but in this way, not so much as a list of jobs that you've had, but more so summarizing the skills that you've gained and the experience that you've had over the years. So cover letters can be a hit or miss. Some hiring managers read them. Some don't, some read them after they first read your resume to learn more, um, but they can be um, somewhat of a tiebreaker. Let's say, you know, you include some information there that wasn't on your resume that gives more insight into who you are or humanizes you as a candidate. So I would say they can be effective if the hire manager reads them, but it doesn't hurt to include them. Someone asked about the, the cost for services. Um, with blue pen resumes. So if you go online, it's based on your level of experience and professional level, as well as your desired delivery speed. And so you can see all the details at bluepenresumes.com. And yes, you can schedule a consultation before purchasing. Do you think it's an issue if your tailored resume for a position differs from your LinkedIn? I think your LinkedIn should definitely touch on what it is that you say that you do um, on your resume. On LinkedIn, yes, LinkedIn is going to be a little bit more general um, in nature, but there should be some thread between both of the um, your, your resume and your LinkedIn. Okay. So that is it. Joseph, did you want to come back on? Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Um, everyone uh, joined me in thanking Kimberly for being here today. Um, I She went through a lot of questions. We got over 50 of them. I know we couldn't really answer all of them and that some of them probably got answered um, as she addressed some other people's questions, but please um, connect with Kimberly if you have some questions or would like uh, to take advantage of um, her services with a 10% discount on a resume writing uh, for healthcare uh, professionals. Uh, we'll be sure to share out that, that discount code in a follow-up email. Um, and before we close, I'd just like to um, encourage you all to complete the follow-up survey that will uh, appear once you end uh, the webinar with us. This will help us to create uh, more programs like this um, and really uh, decide what, what is gonna be coming next out of our Career Coaches Network. Um, and then also we will be sending out in a follow-up email, um, an, a link to RSVP for the next webinar, which is Employing Individual Development Plans to Advance Your Career and Engage Your Direct Reports on Thursday, August 18th. Um, with that, again, Kimberly, thank you so much for being here. and and dealing with the technical difficulties. We really appreciate it. And as uh, we predicted, this was a hot topic and it always continues to be a hot topic. So again, thank you for taking the time. Um, everyone out there, stay safe and enjoy uh, the rest of your day. Go Bruins. Thanks so much, bye.